The first session of the G20 Foreign Ministers meeting on Thursday commenced on multilateralism, food and energy security and development cooperation. The discussion will realize India's theme of one earth, one family, one future for its G20 presidency, which signals the need for unity of purpose and unity of action. Towards realizing the vision of One Earth, One Family, One Future, Session 1 of G20 FMM gets underway. Discussions to focus on contemporary challenges around multilateralism, food and energy security and development cooperation, tweeted the Ministry of External Affairs spokesperson Arindam Bakchi. Earlier in the day, while addressing the G20 foreign delegates ahead of the meeting in Delhi, Prime Minister Narendra Modi hinted that discussions around the Russia-Ukraine war should not derail the rest of the agenda of the summit. As foreign ministers, it is but natural that your discussions are affected by the geopolitical tensions of the day, said PM Modi. Billionaire Gautam Adani on Thursday welcomed the Supreme Court's order to set up an expert committee to examine issues arising out of the US short seller Hindenburg's report on the Adani Group. The committee, headed by retired judge Abhim Manohar Sapre, will include veteran bankers K.B. Kamath and O.P. Bhatt, Infosys co-founder Nandan Nilekani, O.P. Bhatt and retired Justice J.P. Devdhar. Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandrachud said that market regulator SEBI should complete its ongoing investigation in two months and file a status report. The committee of experts will investigate the Adani Rao and suggest measures to strengthen the statutory framework. The Supreme Court was hearing petitions asking for regulatory mechanisms to protect investors. The Supreme Court also directed SEBI to investigate whether there had been a violation of rules and whether there was any manipulation of stock prices. The counting of votes polled in the Nagaland Assembly elections is underway. The Northeastern state voted on February 27th and around 85.79% polling was recorded. Ahead of the counting, elaborate security arrangements were made in the state, a three-tier cordoning system for counting of EVMs across 16 election districts. On Tuesday, re-polling was held at four polling stations in Nagaland. Exit polls predicted that the BJP and the Allies are set to retain power in Nagaland, with the Nationalist Democratic Progressive Party BJP Alliance expected to win 42 out of the 60 seats, while Naga People's Front is expected to win just six. As per reports, BJP State President and Minister Temjan Imna Long is trailing in Alontaki. The ruling Bharatiya Janata Party was on course to read in power in Tripura as the party reached the halfway mark in the latest trends amid the ongoing counting of votes on Thursday. According to the latest data shared by the Election Commission at 11.30am, the BJP was leading in 31 seats while the CPIM Congress Alliance was leading in 16 seats. The Tipra Motha Party is leading in 11 seats. Chief Minister Manik Saha, who is contesting from the town Bardovali constituency, was leading Congress Asis Kumar Saha by 1,321 votes. Manik Saha secured 16,446 votes till 11.30am with his vote share at 50.15%. Counting of votes will take place in 21 centres. The ECS deployed 60 election observers. All counting staff have been trained. Security arrangements and CCTV coverage have been arranged outside and inside counting centres. Kiran Gitte, Tripura's Chief Electoral Officer, said earlier.